most about the, uh, the final outcome of things? Um, you know, there's two kinds of experience. There's inexpensive experience and expensive experience. And you end up uh, losing that game, it becomes expensive experience where uh, we're trying to figure things out. Some guys are chill, still trying to get their get out of their sea legs in college baseball and work through it. Um, you know, they're all here because they're not perfect and it's our job to keep developing them. But uh, the toughness, the competitiveness, there's nothing but positives off of that. Take us through the ninth inning, bottom. <laughs> well, JJ Matajevic, I mean, two strike hitting. I mean, that guy's becoming a major leaguer by using the whole field and staying behind the ball. And uh, that was the magic moment of the game. It was a two strike hit the other way. Uh, Nick shows great patience right there and, and walks. and. Lewis does what he does and, and gets a bunt down and uh, you know they were in a, a bunt defense so JJ could get a big lead at second with the second baseman covering and uh, allowed him to get the jump to be safe. Um, Alfonso being Alfonso, um, which was great. We put him as the pitcher DH, uh, so he would have be up in that spot against a right-handed pitcher, the closer. And then um, you know Bowman took a crack at, at winning it there. Uh, I was concerned about them uh, walking the bases loaded, so we wanted to slot Salazar appropriately, um, so he would be the one that got pitched to, and he did, and they hit him, so it worked out well. What did you say to Morimoto in this meeting that the four of you has had before you decided to keep Powell in right there? Uh, Salazar's gonna hit for you. <laughs> Real enlightening conversation. You you touched on it a little bit yesterday that balance between trying to win every game yet also developing players along the way. How do you strike the proper balance? Between well, it goes hand games? it goes hand in hand. If you develop players first and focus on the play, I'm a big believer the results will follow. And so, and, and it's not as clear as it might seem. You know, there's good players all across the roster. And, you know, I think this weekend was good. A lot of them got in there and, and got a chance to make a contribution to four wins. And ideally, that's how we want to do it. Do you accept the reality of growing pains in that process, especially for the freshmen? I think uh, when I start accepting anything but the very best level of play, it'll be time to do something else. And so the answer is no. So they're going to have a good day off tomorrow and get school scored away. And then Wednesday, we're going to get after it. I mean, it's not going to be one of those easier way into the weekend type deals. We're not there as a team. And uh, we're going to work hard. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, how are Salazar and Rebus examples of guys that you brought along as freshmen who are in, in, in the ways that they've improved? You know, well? exemplary. And they're great team guys, too. I mean, Salazar, I mean, He's, he's one of the best catchers in college baseball, and he's not playing today because we got one of the other best catchers in college baseball in a matchup thing, and he kept himself ready and was ready for an opportunity in the, in the ninth inning. So that's as, as good of an example as you can be. And then Alfonso, you know, didn't start opening night, you know, because of a matchup thing. And, man, he played really well the last two days. And it was very unfortunate on the mound. I actually thought he made good pitches. We didn't give him a whole lot of help. And we'll get that cleaned up. Yeah, what was going through your mind during that second inning? I need to be a better coach is what was going through my mind. How important was patience at the plate today offensively? It's our MO, you know, walks and extra base hits. And this team right here has got a potential to get a lot of those. Uh, I think we'll see better pitching as we go along, which I'm excited about. And so that's why we've got to get back to work on, uh, you know, not just that the defense is, is it was glaring today, but offensively, you know, it's, it's going to keep ramping up. You know, every team on the schedule from this point forward is an NCAA, caliber, NCAA tournament caliber team. And uh, we're looking forward to Thursday night, you know, an undefeated team that has a really good pitching staff and a really good coach. And uh, it's a perfect team to uh, to play at this time of the year. In the search for pitchers that you can trust, how big was Michael Flynn's performance? Huge. And it's, it's been the last few weeks, you know. I mean, as you can see, it, it's a, got a chance to be a special offense. And so these guys have had a rough go of it for six months facing these guys. And so to get him in against another opponent, and to execute was great. Uh, we're gonna need him, no different than we're gonna need some of the guys that struggled uh, last weekend or on Saturday. And um, you know we'll get back to work on improving those guys too. I mean, we finished out two games this weekend. Is that kind of what you envision moving forward, or is it just? <laughs> Man, I don't know. Kind of you know, it, it, you know, we actually thought about uh, we thought about starting him on Sunday if we didn't have to use him on Saturday. We had to use him on Saturday, and he only threw like 17 pitches or something like that. We started about starting him today, but we felt like the chance for him to impact the most games over the two weeks was to do what we're doing with him right now. Well, how crucial is having a piece like that moving forward? You got to have a good closer to be good. I mean, Bobby Dahlbeck and him 
made the season last year because we could finish out a game against Rice or Nebraska or Cal State Fullerton and, and that team gained a lot of confidence from that and, and Cameron allows this team to do that as well.